In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform K nearest neighbors classification using analytic solver. K nearest neighbors or KNN is a data mining method that predicts an observation's value based upon K observation most similar to it. The similarity is measured between observations with respect to the set of input variables or what we call features using Euclidean distance. This method can be used either to classify a categorical outcome or predict a continuous numerical outcome. In this demonstration, I'll focus on the classification aspect. This is the same data set we used in the logistic regression example. Here we try to predict whether a customer would default on the loan with eight characteristics. Because the loan default is a categorical with binary values of ones and zeros, we're going to use KNN classification. Click data mining in the ribbon, click classify, click K nearest neighbors. In the data tab, make sure that the worksheet and the file as well as the data range are selected. Also make sure the first row contains header is checked. The selected variables are independent variables, so we are selecting all eight of them. The output variable is the dependent variable, so we are selecting loan defaults. Similar to the logistic regression, we also have two classes. Success class is class one, which means the customer would default on a loan. Class zero will not default on a loan. Success probability cutoff, we use the default value of 0 0.5. Next. In the parameters tab, first click the partition data. We want to use the partition variable in this data set so that we can create the model from the training set and use it in the test set. We want to rescale data because measurement units are quite different among the variables. It can be over 5,000 for the average balance, whereas binary data is only 0 and 1. Therefore, we would like to rescale data using either standardization or normalization so that we can make sure the measurement unit will not influence the calculation of Euclidean distance in KNN. For the number of neighbors with well, the value of k, we enter 10 and we want to select search 1 through k. This means that we're going to try different values of k and see which model performs the best. Click next. In the scoring, we want to make sure that we check the detail report and lift charts as well for the test set. Click finish. So we ran the KNN for values of k ranging from 1 to 10 on both the training set and validation set. This procedure generates worksheet called KNNC output. And in the search log table, we can see that it contains the overall error rate on the training set and the validation set for the various value of K. And we can see that for K equal to one, it has the smallest overall error rate on the validation set. So this suggests that we classify a customer as a default or no default based on the category of most one similar customer in the training set. In general, selecting the best K is the most critical aspect of applying KAN method. So how do we select the best K? Too small of a value for the k results in prediction that are overfitting to the noise in the training set, while too large value of k results in underfitting and fails to capture the relationship between the features and the outcome variable. In general, we want to find the best k results in the smallest classification or estimation error, like this example shows, and usually we choose the odd value to avoid confusion between two classes so we don't have a tie and the higher value of a k usually has lesser chance of error. There are some methods that can help us determine k, just like we talked about k means clustering before, the elbow method, or there's also a kappa statistics and many other methods to help us find the best k for k and n model. 
because the k equal to 1, which is super small, it's not commonly used. We can see that in the training score, the F1 score is 99% and super high, which hints a possibility of overfeeding. And we can then take a look at the validation score. The F1 score is super low. It's only 4.6%. This confirms our suspicion of K equal to 1 overfits the training data. It doesn't work for the validation or test that well. Also note that the classification for all three sets, the training, the validation, and the test set, is based on the nearest neighbors in the training data. So the error rate on the training data is biased by using actual class 1 observations rather than the estimated class of these observations. So we may consider going back to KNC output and reconsider a different K. Maybe the larger and an odd number of K, K equal to 3, which still has a fairly low error rate, 44.73%. And we may consider using that to score the validation and the test set. Lastly, I want to talk about using ROC and lift chart to measure the performance of classification models because the analytics server is supposed to also output lift chart and my Mac version cannot uh, display that. ROC stands for Receiver Operating Characteristic. It's a graph to display the trade-off between a classifier's ability to correctly identify class 1 versus class 0 error. So it really depends on the context, right, and your goal. In some cases, the sensitivity is more important than the specificity. On the other hand, it could be the other way around. There's really no preference. The goal really is to maximize both. And F1 is a pretty balanced approach. It considers both the sensitivity and specificity. In the ROC curve, uh, you can see that the diagonal dotted line here is the baseline. This is a random classifier and the horizontal is the class 0 error rate and the uh, vertical is the sensitivity. So we can evaluate the quality of a classifier or a classification model by computing the AUC, which stands for area under the ROC curve. In general, the greater the area under the ROC curve, the better the classifier performs. So we see that the ROC1 performs better than the ROC2 and AUC values between 0.6 and 7 is satisfactory. Between 0.7 to 0.8 is good, between 0.8 to 0.9 is very good, and above 0.9 is excellent. Lift chart is another measure of how effective is your predictive model calculated as the ratio between the results with and without it. So it's comparing the predictive model with the at random scenario. If you want to predict, for example, whether a customer is likely to respond to a mailing and then we have rank from highest to lowest score each customer. And we have this lift chart. The horizontal is the sample size and vertical is the percentage of the responders. This shows that we can get 60% of the total responders we would get mailing randomly by only mailing to the top 30% of the score customers. So this can help business carry their marketing campaign at a more cost-effective way. This effect we can also see from the Dassault charts like this. The chart shows that after we sort the customer based upon their probability of responding from high to low, then we break them up into 10 equal bins. And the response rate in the bin 1 is the top 10% of the customers is 29% versus 8% of the random customers. So then we get a lift of 29 divided by 8, which is 3.63. By the time we get to score customers in the fourth bin, we have captured so many of the previous three that the response rate is lower than what we expect to mail them at random. So this is consistent with lift chart results in the previous slide. 